In the last three weeks of July, we sold off heavy. And now to start off this month, we are looking bullish as ever. Uh, so much if you bought any dips you're likely up pretty big on them in this video I want to hop in look at the chart specifically for the SPY QQQ and Palantir because I've been looking at them today and now after taking a look I don't think we're out of the woods yet. All right, so here we are starting off taking a look at the SPY uh, We are on the weekly chart for those of you that don't know I trade using supply and demand mixed with trend lines which means when you get the break of a trend line uh, that is the indicator that the trend has changed. And looking at this trend line right here, we broke through that. And, and for those of you that don't fully understand supply and demand, supply and demand is an institutional trading strategy, which kind of works off the premise that in the areas there are supply and demand, there is either going to be a lot of buyers at demand or a lot of sellers at supply, hence why you see dramatic movement. So this gray box down here is demand. We came down into this gray box. It's, it's not gonna be perfect. It can happen anywhere in the zone. We bought up and now look where we are. We're at supply. So the main reason I wanted to make this video today is really kind of show you what I see in the charts. Uh, kind of let you know that in my eyes, remember I'm not a financial advisor. This isn't financial advice, but I do want to urge caution whenever it comes to just going all in. Right now, the market's very volatile, so I've been trading with a lot less. A little can go a lot further, so do keep that in mind. But just want to let you know, looking on the weekly chart on the higher time frame, right now we did pull back above this trend line. Had you taken the entry at the break, could have wrote it about $10 just to the demand zone. If you somehow were able to catch the bottom, that's a $15 move. If you were able to catch the move from demand, had you bought at the edge of the zone and just targeted the trend line, once again, another $15 move, but looking for the next demand zone or looking for the next supply zone, that's about a $38 move just in the span of two weeks. So whenever you're able to actually trade the strategy and actually have the guts to follow through with it, it's a pretty successful strategy, but of course a lot goes on psychologically in between. Taking a look at this following supply and demand, I am urged to look for some sort of entry to the downside anywhere in this box. An ideal perfect entry would be around here at 65 and maybe even have a stop loss up here at around 570 and target at least this first low right here around 530. Maybe even a new low to continue the trend. Should anyone decide to take a trade like this, this trade has a massive risk reward ratio, which is exactly why I said I am trading with a lot less. To those of you in the Discord, you may have noticed I've been going a lot smaller on my trades. Uh, a lot more trades have been missing. And that's because I am targeting these low risk, high reward trades. So right here, if I were to take a trade, max loss, about $5. Max gain, about $54. This is what I see looking at the SPY. And I wanted to kind of slow it down while we're looking at the SPY, but going on looking at the Qs and Palantir, we're gonna move a little bit faster talking about you know some of the possibilities because now that when we came right here we got a change of character meaning that we are now in a downtrend if we don't make a new high and we end up forming a lower high this does become some sort of lower high it could look something like this so if we make a same high maybe it's a double top we make a slightly lowered high maybe we continue the downtrend and look for a new low so we made a new uh, so we made a new low right here. Uh, maybe we come down, test the next low over here. Maybe work our way back up. And maybe we come to work our way back up. Maybe if we continue, we come down here. But it's important to remember each of these candles are weekly. So this, of course, is something that would take time. So definitely play it level by level. So going on, looking at the cues, uh, looking kind of what I see right now. Similarly to the SPY right up here this we are once again we are at a supply zone and it is looking like demand on the queues we came down to demand we bought back up to supply i kind of drew this trend line coming down i think on the four hour chart yeah so we were kind of respecting this to the four hour on the four hour chart we broke above 
And now I could see us coming up to like 500 or maybe retesting the high or maybe on the four hour chart, we're taking a look. Maybe we consolidate here and actually come to test new lows. All right. So once again, got to play it level to level. Should we come back down below this trend line? I'm just going to draw this continue this trend line know that we have some trends going we'll see if if we open up above or below the trend line but just know that's there and and actually on the longer time frame on the weekly chart we are still in an uptrend and we still are respecting this trend but if you want to look at this trend line we have broken below so while one trend has broken there is still another trend down below to the upside. So be on the lookout for that. Once again, I want to let you know, I'm not trying to push a narrative or anything. I am just trying to bring awareness to what I see and some things to maybe watch out for and just maybe urge a little caution to not throw all your savings in here. And now last but not least, uh, taking a look at Palantir. Uh, once again, on the weekly chart, looking at Palantir, if we look all the way back to may of 2023 on the weekly chart palantir has been respecting this channel to the upside all right so this trend line has been serving as support this line has been serving as resistance we've had a couple breaks to the downside no full confirmation and we had a couple breaks to the upside once again no full confirmation we actually closed out the week right here at the trend line, which actually provides great opportunity, especially for anyone that likes to trade straddles. Looking at Palantir to the downside, to anyone that wants to short Palantir, when it comes to the potential for this trade, um, if it were too far right away, it's about 20% to the downside. If it were to take its time to pull back and not do much, this is assuming it just trades in a range all the way to February. You got $2 of downside, uh, but typically when Palantir has its pullbacks, you can see they happen a little bit faster. This one over here happened over about three weeks. First pullback, then consolidated. Uh, this pullback may have been about two months. And then once again, this one from where it actually touched the trend line in March, kind of ended up bottoming out in April. So typically about a month after a month or month and a half, which from here would be down here. You still have about a $6 move or 20% move to the downside on Palantir. So should it continue this trend that it's been following in this channel, there's 20% down worth of downside and looking at Palantir and where it can go from here should we get a breakout next level looks like it's about 10 percent upside beyond that if it really wants to move 15 percent 20 percent and up to 40 percent upside assuming Palantir is heading for all time highs. I hope this video provided some insight. If, if you haven't already taken advantage of it and are interested in getting up to 20 free stocks, hey, be sure to check out the Moomoo referral link down below in the description. That is going away at the end of the month. So be sure to sign up before that's gone. If you enjoyed the video and learned anything, be sure to smash the like button. For some reason you made it this far and haven't already, be sure to subscribe. And last, but certainly not least, thank you so much for watching. Matthew Manuel signing off and I want to change your life.